hi guys so I'm going to show you four things and I'm going to give you five seconds to guess what I'm talking about today and the first one is cow's milk and the second one is dirt and the third one is blood the fourth and last one is alcohol so what am I talking about Well, if you guess the world's most disgusting cocktail, then you're wrong. Let's talk about you and your anemia. So as usual, we start with definition. What does anemia mean? So the root word is Greek and an means no or not. And hemia is usually used for blood. So this is no blood. So does anemia mean you don't have any blood? If they take your blood and spin it around really, really fast, your blood divides into three different parts. And around 45% of that are your red blood cells. The other 55% is something called plasma. And this is, most of this is water, but it also contains a bunch of other things like different ions and proteins and different gases. And then you have a very small part that contains your white blood cells. So these are the parts of your immune system. So when we're talking about anemia, which part of the blood are we talking about? We're talking about the red blood cells, 45% of your blood. So we're not talking about all of your blood, we're talking about this specific part of your blood. And what's the role of red blood cells? Well, they have one main function. When you breathe in, all that oxygen has to get to all the different cells in your body. And that's done by red blood cells. And there are two things inside the red blood cells that make this happen something called hemoglobin so you can think of this like four little circles in your red blood cells and in the middle of these circles is iron the oxygen molecules bind to the iron in the middle of the hemoglobin so if you don't have iron oxygen can't bind if you don't have that hemoglobin the iron goes in oxygen can't bind and if you don't have a proper shaped red blood cell then oxygen can't bind and all of these lead to anemia. For a properly functioning red blood cell, you need properly functioning DNA. You need iron. You also need some vitamins, specifically B12 and folate. Anything that disrupts these four leads to anemia. So when we're talking about DNA, so some people can inherit some um, dysfunction in their DNA that means that their blood cells that are produced are not functioning properly so things like sickle cell and thalassemia so they end up messing up with the shape of the blood cell and also with the hemoglobin another one is vitamin b12 so this is a vitamin that we usually take in into our diet and it's absorbed in the small intestine this is where alcohol comes in so alcoholics are known to have deficiency in b12 but it's not just alcoholics it's been known that even moderate intake of alcohol has been shown to decrease the absorption of b12 and folate as well it's something that we get from our diet which is needed to produce properly functioning red blood cells and now the most common cause of anemia is iron deficiency so this is known as iron deficiency anemia this happens in two ways the first one is blood loss if you're losing a lot of blood you're losing red blood cells you're losing the hemoglobin in the red blood cells so this can happen in trauma that if you have some sort of bleeding especially internal bleeding or things like bleeding through your stomach or your intestines and for women our periods we're losing blood every month and some women end up losing such a large amount of blood every month that it causes anemia so this is very common in women in the childbearing years in the years that we have our periods another way you can get iron deficiency anemia is any time there's rapid growth. So this kind of happens three times in our lives. The first is newborns, especially premature babies. They're growing very fast and that means the body is using up a lot of things. So if you're not having enough iron coming in, it can lead to a deficiency. And also during adolescence, when you go through your growth spurt as a teenager, again, your body's using up a lot of things to help you grow. And another one is during pregnancy. So there's rapid growth over a short period of time so if you're not taking in enough iron, that can lead to anemia. 
because in my last video I talked about the mitochondria and the role of the mitochondria is to produce energy. All the energy we're using comes from the mitochondria in our cells. And to produce this energy, it needs mainly two things that we have to put into our bodies. The first one is glucose, the second one is oxygen. So if you're not having enough red blood cells or hemoglobin to transport all this oxygen to your cells, that means no energy is being produced. So this is why a lot of the signs and symptoms of anemia are related to lack of energy. So people will have things like tiredness, fatigue, dizziness, sometimes even fainting. And even in exercise or just doing the normal things you do, you find you're getting very tired very quickly. And sometimes things like chest pain or palpitations. So palpitation is when you can feel your heart beating really hard. And also common one is pallor. So some people just look drained and they look pale because there's different levels of iron storage. So I think of this like money. So we use our phones now all the time for different money transactions. So you have the money in your phone, right? So whenever you use that for daily life, and then sometimes you might have like the extra cash in your pocket or in your wallet or purse. Then you have your savings account. So this is not an everyday thing that you use. It's supposed to store all your cash. So this is the same for iron. So you have the iron you use every day. That's inside your red blood cells. That's the one doing the job of carrying all the oxygen. Then you have this free iron that's just kind of just chilling around. It's not really being used. Then you have your stored up iron, which is in your liver. So if you're not having enough iron going into your body or you're bleeding too much and you're having a lot of loss of iron, you start losing some of the free iron, some of the spare iron, you start losing um, the iron in your red blood cells and eventually your body starts using your stored up iron. So the more depleted you are, the more signs and symptoms that you have. And another interesting symptom, and this is where the dirt comes in, is something called pica. So pica is having an appetite for things which are not really food and have no nutritional value. So basically we shouldn't be eating them. So some people get an appetite for things like dirt, clay, paper, chalk, ice, just, just random cravings for things that we really shouldn't be eating. I remember growing up, I think I might have had this, but I'm not sure because I used to love, love eating ice especially in the freezer. I call it the freezer for I'd go in there and just get spoonfuls as if I'm eating ice cream, just spoonfuls of ice and I used to love chewing ice. And sometimes I'd, these, there were specific spoons we had in the house that had a metallic taste to them and I really used to like that metallic taste. So looking back, maybe I was iron deficient because I was a teenager so maybe I was going through a growth spurt and I didn't have enough iron and I just wanted to eat spoons and ice. <laughs> so this is actually a common thing for people who have iron deficiency, zinc deficiency and also in pregnancy as well. So how do we treat iron deficiency anemia? Since you don't have enough iron, you put iron back into your body and you can do this through your diet. So there are many different types of foods that have iron such as meats, so you have beef, pork and liver. You can also find it in seafood and shellfish, also in certain seeds like pumpkin seeds or sesame seeds. And also it's abundant in green vegetables, lots of leafy green vegetables and fruits as well. And another way is just is to take iron tablets. So this are called like ferrous sulfate, ferrous gluconate. And it takes a while for you to correct the iron deficiency. In about two weeks of taking the tablets, you'll start to feel a bit better so you might have a little bit more energy so going back to the money analogy so now you you have a little bit of cash so you can start doing your everyday things and in about four weeks the level of iron in your blood is corrected it's back to normal so now you have cash in your phone you have a little bit of spare cash but it takes about three to six months to completely replenish your stores so this is your savings account so you have to keep taking the iron to make sure you have enough iron for your everyday use and you have enough iron stored up there's some advice on how to take the iron so you're usually told to take iron with vitamin c this is because vitamin c helps iron get absorbed into your system this is where also milk comes in cow's milk has been found to inhibit the absorption of iron so you're discouraged from drinking cow's milk while you're taking the tablets this is also seen in children when you see um, very small children 
taking a lot of cow's milk they end up being iron deficient so it's usually advised to give milk that's fortified with iron or to give other food that has iron that's it that's a short quick guide into anemia specifically iron deficiency anemia as always thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time bye